A Buffalo mother is gunned down while driving with her children inside. The people they shooting at, they not hitting. They, you know, they hitting the innocent people. Police say she was not the intended target. Hear what steps city leaders are taking to try and stop the violence. Keep me a close eye on the shower and thunderstorm chances this evening and a great looking weekend. Latest on all that coming up. Plus, Friday Night Lights. The Buffalo Bills are at New Era Field for their first open practice there of the season. What you need to know if you're heading to one Bills drive. News 4 at 5 starts right now. Live in high definition, this is Western New York's news leader. Now, News 4 at 5. We need to hold these stone-cold killers accountable. A Buffalo mother of five is the latest victim of gun violence on Buffalo's east side. The 31-year-old woman was shot in broad daylight while driving on Butler Avenue. Three of her children were in the back seat of the car at the time. Now, Buffalo police are asking the community to please come forward to help them find whoever is responsible. News 4's Marissa Perlman is here with more on the investigation. Marissa? Don, the family of the victim identifies her as LaKendra Tillman, but the Buffalo Police Department tells us her name is LaKendra Tolman. Police tell us Tillman was not the intended target in this shooting. We spoke with her family, who are pleading with the community to come forward if you saw who might be responsible for this. The shooting broke out just before 2 on Butler near Kensington. The victim was driving a pickup truck, again, her three kids in the back seat when the shooting broke out. She was rushed to ECMC, where she died from her injuries. Again, the Buffalo Police Department is calling this a targeted event and that the passenger in the victim's car was actually the intended target. Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown is increasing police patrols in this area in light of the shooting. He's asking neighbors for help tonight, saying the greatest initiative in this area is community cooperation to solve crimes like this. An innocent person, an innocent woman, an innocent member of our community for no good reason was shot and killed yesterday because someone else was targeted and they missed who they targeted. That is just absolutely unacceptable and intolerable. We need people to come forward and share information. We have to take these people off of the streets of the city. They're willing to conduct daylight shootings, nighttime shootings, and with reckless disregard for any other person that might be around. Now, the Buffalo Police Department is now pulling surveillance video from city cameras and homes in this area to try to narrow down a suspect. Friends of LaKendra Tillman will be holding a peaceful protest to put an end to gun violence. That's on Butler Avenue tomorrow at 3 p.m. Next at 6, you'll hear from neighbors who say they're feel fearful of what could happen next in this neighborhood. Marissa Perlman, News 4. A Buffalo man is admitted to trying to sexually abuse a young girl. 36-year-old Manuel Blanco Ortiz pleaded guilty today in court. The Erie County District Attorney says between January of 2017 and April 30th of that year, Ortiz tried to sexually abuse an underage girl. He faces a maximum of four years in prison. His sentencing is now scheduled for October 12th. New York State Police say speed played a role in a deadly crash overnight involving a motorcyclist in Elma. Troopers say the Lancaster man who died was traveling more than double the speed limit on the 400 Expressway when he lost control. News 4's Rachel Monjovi has more on the accident and the search for another biker. Rachel? Don and Jackie, troopers tell us the two motorcycles were going more than 100 miles an hour on the 400 last night. A trooper was already running a stationary radar at a U-turn when the pair passed him. The trooper attempted to pull both motorcycles over, both headed north, one got away. The other motorcycle lost control at the transit road exit ramp and was thrown from the bike after striking a guardrail. guardrail. 29-year-old Nathan Nabb of Lancaster died at ECMC. Trooper James O'Callaghan told us the trooper who witnessed the accident barely caught up to them by time of the collision. He says the accident could have been prevented. One of the things that we want to, you know, stress is if you're on a motorcycle as a motorcycle operator, there are so many dangers out there, whether it be another vehicle, whether it be animal running into the road raid. We're talking this particular incident was 10-10 at night. 
There's a lot of different things that could happen. There could be debris in the roadway that could. So doing in excess of 100 miles an hour is extremely dangerous. State police are still looking for the driver of the other motorcycle. They are still investigating whether the two knew each other. Anyone with any information is asked to contact the state police. Rachel Monjovi, News 4. Well, debris and a mangled car are what's left after a fatal crash in Hamburg. It happened about 10.45 this morning on Southwestern Boulevard near ECC South. Hamburg police say 29-year-old Jeffrey Bottoms was killed after his vehicle and another car collided. The crash caused Bottoms' car to hit a utility pole and roll over. The 80-year-old driver of the other car was not seriously hurt. Police believe speed may have been a factor in this crash. Anyone who saw the accident is asked to call the Hamburg police. And that crash happened right near New Era Field. Hundreds of people are heading there tonight for the Buffalo Bills' first practice of the season at the stadium. This is a live look on Abbott Road right now. You can see the sheriff's deputies in place to direct traffic. And that means there will be a lot of traffic and several detours that you should use a lot of caution in that area to avoid any accident. And of course, there are many road closures in place right now. Abbott Road is closed between Lot 4 and Lot 2. And the other closures are the same as they would be on any other regular Bills game day. We have all this information posted for you right on our website, WIVB.com, and on the News 4 app. And it's going to be a great night for Bills fans as long as the rain holds That's off, right? That's right. So the question is, is the rain heading at all to New Era Field? Let's check in with our chief meteorologist, Todd Santos. Uh, at the moment, I don't think so. I think they're actually we're looking pretty good. But this hit or miss stuff, uh, you know, I will say is pro providing some localized, very heavy downpours. Saw some action here on the Wilson Harbor cam. Uh, and we have some dark skies. You can actually see the way the water Kind of changes texture there in the last couple of frames, right? They're taking way too long to get there. Uh, but that's actually the rain right there hitting the ground. So as far as some of these downpours are concerned, this one is working its way off toward Lake Ontario. It was producing some lightning, uh, say, around South Wilson. Uh, it started to fall apart with the lightning side of things. But there's still a chance, and there's still some of the heavy rain working its way north. All cut, just getting barely clipped with that one. Uh, there's another uh, kind of couple of these into Orleans County and northwest Genesee County. This one right along the edge of the throughway near Pembroke. Uh, mainly just rain producers, but this green line Line. We've talked about these recently uh, as an outflow boundary. It's rain cooled air that comes out of the storm. It can also a lot of times be the noteworthy piece just because you feel a strong gust of colder air and say, where did that come from? Well, it came in this case from that storm and in this case of these uh, from those storms. So along those lines, they can act like frontal boundaries like that one near Clarence and help to influence other storms to form. So that's some stuff we'll be watching this evening. Uh, and a lot of this stuff is limited to mainly, say, the next few hours. I mean, even around Chautauqua Lake, uh, down towards the Sherman area, getting some rainstorms dumping there. The once we hit 9, 10, 11 o'clock tonight, pretty much all this fades off the radar. We will hang on to some of the cloud cover during the overnight hours, uh, but even over the last six hours, we've seen kind of this evolve and then it'll slowly fall apart over the next couple of hours. So temperature wise, here's where we are. There are some spots that are cooler because of that rain that we're dealing with. And with a lot of this moisture in place, uh, including just the high dew points, it's been humid anyway, we will end up with a scenario with some patchy fog into early tomorrow morning. Uh, at least once we hit the late night hours, chance for additional rain showers backs off. Temperatures in the 60s. We'll take a look at your weekend coming up. Don, Jackie. Thank you, Todd. Straight ahead in two minutes. Case closed. Police in Las Vegas released their final report on that deadly mass shooting last year. We'll tell you what question still remains unanswered tonight. And then coming up at 5.30, it's a small mistake that's easy to spot. We'll tell you who's responsible for this misspelled sign in Buffalo.